There we go. Get on with it. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, I... Oh, we're not getting any sound, are we? No, we're not getting any sound. Um, yeah, I, I don't remember what the story is here with Devolver. Uh, I think the lady that kept, like, getting blood all over her face is gone, hasn't she? I want to say. Oh, are we getting an actual Volvi game? Maybe. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'm sure there'll be some ultra violence in here somewhere. It's inevitable. Okay. Sound. Sound go up. When people ask me what I like to do with my free time, I tell them that these days, I'm afraid I really don't have any free time. No, oh, he's in the UK. My life is pretty much scheduled down to the minute. Okay, I don't have a job per se, and I'm not in a relationship right now, but I do have my interests. All right. Is Volby gonna come bursting through a wall and like rip his head off or something? I guess you could say I am passionate, maybe even a little obsessive, about Devolver video games. When I think about the many enjoyable hours I've spent playing my games, I say to myself, what a wonderful world it is we live in. And I say thank you. Thank you to all those who have made my life so damn fun. All of the merch they made for this last year sold out instantly, apparently. <laughs> Piku Niku. Staring into your soul. And that's why today is so important to me. Today is a special day. Today is Volvi's birthday. A chance for me to show my appreciation for somebody who has given me so much over the years. Take Call to the Lamb, for example. A roguelike video game developed by indie studio Massive Monster and published by Devolver Digital. The game was released on the 11th of August, 2022, and has sold over 4 million copies to date. It's gonna kick, kiss the, the cake. follows a lamb who was saved from death by a godlike Okay. <laughs> Call the lamb DLC? Damn, this art, this fucking animation though. I think they've had the sex update, haven't they? Is that a free update? Is that, our man's still alive, right? Yeah, I, I still haven't played it either, my, honestly. <laughs> This is very uncomfortable. This is what houses look like in the 80s. People forget that putting on a good party can be a lot of work. It's a lot of pressure. Everyone is relying on you as the host to get things right. You don't want to humiliate yourself, do you? 
not in front of him. But we thought you were executed by the head of state. No, <laughs> I was not. Now pass me that onion. I'm gonna need a snack if we're gonna get on the Dog milk. The Crush House is crushing it as the country's number one reality show. And things are heating up this week. The insatiable fans, beloved sponsors, and savvy network execs what? won't believe what's in store for our cast of potential lovers and haters. Monday. Sees the tension between Priscilla and B finally boil over into an explosive confrontation. Into a steamy moment by the fool. Is this real? Tuesday is a bit more chill in the house as Io brings the cast together with a bopping saxophone performance. As Charlie brings the cast together with a bopping saxophone performance. Wednesday. Tune in Wednesday for the real fireworks when Charlie and Milo, Beer and Alex sneak off for a little moment of self-reflection. For a little romantic time in the garden. For a wild fist fight. And by the end of the week, crowd favorite Emil Priscilla finally lets all their love and a little lust. Is this his big brother? Free. Finally takes matters into their own hands. Finally goes down the success line. We're gonna get the this is the fucked up part now, right? Do not miss this week in the Crush House. There will never be anything like it ever again. Okay. So again, another twist there. What the twist was, I don't know. Some kind of, again, kind of scary horror type birthday thing. birthday isn't just about looking backwards. It's about considering the future. Sure, we've had some great times over the years, but who's to say the next years won't be even better? I know Volvi has so much more to offer us. Who knows what he'll do next? Oh, that's the game we Perhaps play in the book. truly unexpected. Maybe even a new genre. A rogue foo city builder. I made that up myself, but I like it. Something fast-paced, inspired by martial arts movies, set within the confines of a vast yet claustrophobic city dominated by vicious gangs. Each run is different depending say on rogue which of these food. crime syndicates you take down first. Maybe even crafted by the talented Dead Cells designer Sebastian Bernard. Wow. Fantastic. Now that's the kind of game I would play. Now that's the kind of game I would play. Now that's the kind of game I would play. This guy's not having a good day. Who I might be in. You can't get me with animated tra cool animated trailers again. Although this is still kind of getting me. Please be a game I actually want to play this time. <laughs> This looks sick. Yeah, this is this is me. This is a me game. Tenjutsu. I'll have that. I mean, it wasn't really a city builder, was it? It's got city building elements in it, I suppose, but... Of My man's course, using an Atari controller on everyone. a fucking Mega Drive. Some people prefer to spend their time outside exploring the natural world. Or watching their team win the big trophy. 
Yay. <laughs> and to them, I say whatever works for you. We all have our passions. And if you're going to be passionate about something, then why not go all in? And hey, if you don't care about anything passionately, well then I feel sorry for you. Oh no. I guess what I'm trying to say is that it's important to be true to who you are. Don't fuck the Volvi. That might sound plush. easy, but a lot of people are just too afraid. Too scared of being judged. To look in the mirror and say, Yes. This is who I am. I'm not a robot. Talos Principle 2 is a puzzle adventure video game developed by Crow Team and published by Devolver Digital. A sequel to the Talos Principle, 2014. The game was released in November 2023 to critical acclaim. The sequel builds on the first game's origin story of robot kind by exploring the newly emerged robotic civilization through the newborn eyes of 1K. It has been described as thoughtful, heartfelt, and deeply moving. I just wish there was more. Road to Elysium is a three-part coda that allows you to dive deeper into they the world this of already, the Talos Principle 2 think... and put your puzzle-solving skills to the test. In Orpheus Ascending, you return as 1K and enter Cerevi's mind to retrieve the shattered fragments of her personality. Set in a gorgeous environment inspired by ancient Egypt, this expansion challenges you to solve puzzles unconventionally. These games look Cerebi, so hard. Chance at life. Step into the shoes of Yakut and visit the Isle of the Blessed. Challenge yourself with a wide variety of never before seen puzzles using familiar tools, culminating in the Hexahedron, a large, continuous puzzle cluster set in a mysterious crooked tower. Into the Abyss takes you on a journey through a dream world, full of the most challenging puzzles yet, taking place on a series of floating islands and shattered dreams. Road to Elysium continues the evolution of the robot world, providing you with a new perspective through a series of thought-provoking new stories. Are the games actually fun, though? I suppose it's subjective, isn't it? That man's been fucking plushies! <laughs> right. You want to do it in like smaller chunks, maybe? Oh, hello. Good evening, sir. I uh, hope I'm not interrupting anything important. No, no. We've had some complaints about some noise. One of your neighbors has described hearing strange sounds. <laughs> strange sounds? <laughs> uh, that would be my TV set. I, I like to keep my shows cranked. Uh, yeah, I like to get lost in, in the experience. OK, maybe in future, keep your TV and any other devices at a reasonable volume. I'm sure I don't need to remind you of the law against noise pollution. I don't want to have to waste any more police time dealing with petty issues like this. So, Looks like a hotline Miami man. Sir. Oh, I just saw Crocs. Flash kickers. Yeah! <laughs> How does that work? I don't know. Who cares? Let's just do a million kicks. Okay. <laughs> 
so the shoes all have different abilities. <laughs> Anchor foot is a great name. <laughs> Are you okay, sir? Yeah. That looks yeah. fun. Um, absolutely. Yeah, you know what? Uh, first thing, get back, tomorrow Molly. I'm, I'm going to go around to everyone in the area. I'm going to make things right. Uh, a formal apology and uh, a card? <laughs> I don't think that's necessary, sir. Just keep the noise down. Yeah, I'm going to switch it off. Uh, a, a day without TV would probably do me a world of good. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, thank you, officer. Where'd you keep your TV, then? Hmm? Oh, um, I, I, I have a, a few just dotted around the place. Yeah, like I said, I, I like to uh, immerse myself in the experience. So I think I might need to pop in, take a look around the place, if that's okay. Well, uh, I, I'm expecting uh, some guests now, so um, perhaps another time would be more uh, appropriate. Sir, you need to step aside now. Oh, sir, oh, oh that sound! That, that's, a, that's an old plumbing issue. Receiving it's really, it's a matter for the landlord, so uh, I could just give him a call and he can fix it. Please. Officer. It's Volvi being kept prisoner for the last 10 years or something. Hello, police? Hello? resting heart rate is precisely 65 beats per minute. Rapid elevation is often attributed to stress. My heart, my heart machine, is an American independent video game development studio founded by Alex Preston. The studio is best known for developing Hyper Light Drifter 2016 and Solar Ash 2021. But rumors suggest that they may have another project on the way. It may or may not feature a rich interconnected world built to be approached in many ways, non-linear, with emphasis on clear choice for where to go next. This purely hypothetical game's narrative balances the bleak reality of the characters with absurdity and humor. God help me. Yep. Possible Tom game. Yeah, I'm in. This looks great. These guys have like impeccable art style, don't they, in all their games? Possessors. Nice. Yep, yeah, that's cool. I should probably play Hyperlight Drifter before I get into Hyperlight Breaker, shouldn't I? This guy's probably just murdered everyone in his, uh... in like a catatonic state. <laughs> Cake! I didn't I didn't see her. Was it the lady from the previous ones? Oh shit, I missed her. Oh yeah, no, I see her. She looks different. She hasn't got the long hair. That was her, wasn't it? Hey. Thanks for 
the party, friend. Oh, okay. It's no use, guys. Fish Pig and the Warlocks have trapped us in. That madman. He won't stop until he has turned everything into toxic waste. Yes, Robotia. And if my calculations are correct, Fish Pig's toxic slime will reach the city center in just under two hours. Heck, it could even reach the banking sector. Grumpfish, no. Grumpfish, anger. But there must be a way. <laughs> we can't just give up. We just need... We just need... <laughs> How about a helping hand? No, me. But we thought you were executed by the head of state. No, I was not. Now pass me that onion. I'm gonna need a snack if we're gonna take on Fish Pig, and we need to get back to This Buzzard is exactly what cartoons were like. King turns all the money in Buzz Bridge line. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, Mr. Pennyworth, but the economy is looking a little unstable. No, no, you can't do that. Don't turn all the money into toxic slime. We need all that. You can't stop me from doing it, Mr. Banker. Well, you might ruin the money, but you can't break the spirit of the bankers. You don't get it, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody can stop me now. Not even your precious... Baldy! Or what? No! Sorry we're late to the party, Fish Pig, but we didn't want to turn up empty-handed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we don't have to worry about Fish Pig anymore. I'm looking forward to just hanging out with my buddies. Who's up for a pizza at mine? I hypothesize a ham and pineapple slice or two. Sorry, friends, but I gotta get going. Huh? But Volvi... I've got to get back to the Vol dimension, Volvinia. I've got a family to look after. And besides, pizza pie is greasy and gives me shit diarrhea. He's right, guys. <laughs> no pizza tonight. <laughs> Eating healthy is important. Okay. <laughs> Where's the horrible violence that they usually have in this stuff? That was mental. <laughs> Oh, horrible shit diarrhea. Okay, I'm just looking. Yeah, there's nothing at the end there. Okay. Oh, dear. Yeah, I was kind of expecting more... Uh... Well, I suppose that's the point, isn't it? You're expecting something bad to happen, but it actually doesn't. Unless it did, and that was at the end was just like in his own brain. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I mean, yeah, the, the the games, there was a bit of violence in the games, but like there's usually in the overarching story, there's a bit of a uh, bit of something going on, isn't there? Reese, what's up, man? Uh, so there were obviously there wasn't a lot there because Devolver don't show a lot. But I mean, as far as what interested me, that um, what was that game called? The one with anime punch woman. Uh, what was it called again? I'm just looking it up through the video here. Reese, you're always getting on so late now. Tenjutsu, yeah, that looked sick. And that Possessors one looked awesome as well. I think they were probably the two... two but Actually, no, to be fair, the the, ki the kicking one looked good too. Angerfoot. <laughs> so actually, there was three games there that uh, I liked. Um, I do, I do like how like interesting they make these uh, these showcases. Because obviously they don't have as much to show because they're just a smaller publisher, but they make it memorable at least, don't they? <laughs> 